good morning student so today we will uh, begin with the design and problem session on the design of the screw threads so in the design of uh, machine elements uh, so this uh, design of the screw threads or screw fasteners <coughs> so here in this session so we are going to discuss uh, some of the the design uh, types of uh, design methods and which type of stresses are involved in the designing of a the screw threads so we are going to discuss in this session so let us begin with the, the session so this is uh, the content of the session the stresses in the screw threads important equations or relations and in with their ends some of the solved examples and question answer session is there along with the the sum of homework problems we will assign uh, on the screw threads multiple choice question is there and so let us uh, don't waste in this one and let us begin with the, the first uh, that is the stresses in the screw threads so here in the designing of a screw fastener or a screw threads the basic designing is based on the type of the stresses which are inducing in the material of the bolt or screw fasteners so for the design purpose basically there are uh, the three types of stresses are considered for the design purpose the one is the the tensile stress is going to consider the second one is the shear stress is to be considered and the third one is combined tension as well as the shear stresses are considered in the designing of a the screw threads so in the consideration that is in the first one that is in the designing of a tensile stress so means when the nuts and bolts or screw fasteners are subjected to the the tensile loading so the when they are subjected to the tensile loading there is a inducing of the the tensile strain in the material of the bolts so because this tensile stress which try to the uh, effect try to act on the the material because of the 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 that stress that is intensity of a intent uh, intensity of a internal resisting force that is offered by that is we call it as a simply a stress so means in case of tensile stress there is a chance of failure of the nut and bolt when the stress which will exceed the beyond the limit means within the uh, resisting within the limit it's okay okay so beyond the limit there is a chance of failure of the the screw fastener so here in this so let us uh, the, the first one in the tensile stress the screw threads are subjected to the tensile loading so here we have given the sum of the equations so already we have know that the in the basic that is the strength of material the basics of strength of material the definition of the stress is very very simple that is the intensity of a internal resisting force is known as the stress or in other way the force per unit cross sectional area force or load per unit cross sectional area so it is known as the stress and in case of screw threads since the stress is equal to load applied or force divided by the area of cross section so here in case of the the screw fasteners the area of a screw fastener or nut and bolt is how we are going to calculate so that is one of the very very important thing because so to get this so once again we have to go behind hand means go to the the minimum requirement for the the formation or to form a screw threads or to form a helical groove over the object what are the minimum requirement so the minimum requirement to get the helical groove over a the object is the object should be in cylindrical nature so this is must and should for getting the screw threads or for forming the screw threads the object should be cylindrical in size no doubt the over the cylindrical object only we are going to form the screw threads or a helical grooves so means so from that the cylindrical object the cross section of the cylinder the cross section of the, the cylindrical portion so it is simple that is the area of the cross section is pi by 4 d square you can say it as a d square so if you are considering the nominal diameter as a d then it is known as d square okay here so from that you can easily find out the the stress from the stress equation only 
applied load divided by cross sectional area here just they are rearranging the term for the load since the bolts are under the tensile loading so it is denoted by the capital p and therefore p is equal to the tensile stress it is indicated by the sigma t into the a a is the cross sectional area of the bolt so this is the equation we have given that is finally p is equal to pi by 4 dc square into sigma t where this p is measured in the in si system that is in newton or so rearranging the term for the dc square so we have to find out the value of dc this dc is nothing but a root or core diameter it is also called as minimal diameter or minimum diameter of the screw thread so it is dc is equal to square root of 4p divided by pi into sigma t so no doubt the diameters we are measuring in the m so about this is the about the the tensile stress inducing in the material so here this is the very very important so while coming to the design section so more frequently we are using this equation that is p is equal to pi by 4 dc square into sigma t okay so we have to remember this equation now moving on to the the second type of stress that is the shear stress so here in the application like uh, in the couplings when two or more shafts are connected by the the couplings or a flange coupling the purpose is to transmit the power from one shaft to the other shaft so it is requires the the coupling so these couplings are the combined or the coupled with the help of nuts and bolts when they are subjected to the the dynamic application when they are the shafts are rotating so when the nut and bolts are used for the assembling these two shaft with the help of the coupling so at that time there is a chance of inducing of it the shear stress into the the bolt so because of that there is a the development of the the shear stresses in the material of the bolt so as a result there is a there is a chance of acting of the the shear load will act over the the, the bolt material and here bolt material so for that shear stresses that is this is the shear stresses are inducing in the the bolt material they are trying to prevent the relative moment so therefore here also it is same the moreover the both the equations are same here the shearing stress or shear load which carried by the bolt is equal to ps is equal to pi by 4 d square into tau into l here here we are indicating the shear stress by the the notation called tau where n is the the number of bolts are involved in the system okay where the d is the nominal diameter and this is the is the shear load which is indicated by the ps therefore we can easily find out the nominal diameter square root of ps 4 ps divided by pi into n so this is the about the the load which is acting on to the the shear load which is acting on to the the material so let us so before the here you have to remember the sum of the very very important note so for the design purpose so first one is the when the external load is taken up by the number of bolts so so for whatever the the equations given for the tensile load or shear load so they are for the the one number of that is one bolt for a single bolt we are going to uh, write the equation that is p is equal to pi by 4 dc square into sigma t for the tensile stress tensile load and ps is equal to pi by 4 d square into tau so this is for the shear load so if there are n number of bolts are there so at that time simply it is multiplied by a number of bolts that is small n indicated by small n then we are getting the total load acting on the the number of bolts which is indicated by p is equal to pi by 4 dc square into sigma t into n so this is the one so the second note to we should remember so after finding the root diameter or core diameter in case the standard tables are not available or in most of the cases so assuming we are uh, considering it as a coarse thread and that is the the standard equation dc is equal to 0.84 this is the one of the very very important empirical relation which we have derived from the the past experience this is the, the dc is equal to 0.84 d or otherwise you can also use the design data book in that the the values are there so both the methods uh, here we are solving the problem by utilizing the this uh, the empirical relation along with the the design data book also in the design data book if the standard values 
or are not available in the table at that time compulsorily we have to go for the this empirical equation that is this is equal to 0.84 d only so and the so this is for the chorus thread and the, the stand that is in the diam that is in the the design data book so yeah the third one is the to find the standard diameter refer the the, the design data book is also permitted so this is about the the important note related to the this next we will move on to the the third type that is combined tension and shear so here in case of the coupling there is a chance of development of the combined stresses are developed both tensile as well as the shear stresses are inducing in the material of the bond that is used in the couplings as well as in the bearings so since they are used for the dynamic application very very speed application that is whenever there is a rotation or the speed of the shaft is more so at that time we are going to use this type of the, the nuts and bolts for the coupling so here so for the our label this is our beyond our scope so this is the so anyhow we have to remember anyhow to for the theoretical purpose also we should know so the designing of the, the screw fasteners or nut and bolt based on the combined tension as well as shear stress so here we are following the the maximum principal shear stress theory along with the maximum principal tensile stress theory so in the maximum principal shear stress theory the tau max which is equal to 1 by 2 square root of sigma t square plus 4 tau square and in the maximum principal tensile stress theory that is sigma t max is equal to sigma t by 2 plus 1 by 2 square root of sigma square plus 4 tau square these stresses should not exceed the the safe value whatever the permissible value they are assigned should not exceed that limit otherwise so there is a chance of failure of the material so that we should remember it so here no doubt in our uh, designing process so most of the time we are not using this that is we are only considering tensile as well as shear stress we are going to solve the number of so this is the the three types of the stresses which are inducing in the material of the bolt okay for the design purpose okay so let us move on to the further so here the uh, next the second one is second important is that that is equations and relations to be used for the this is the design so that is uh, first we should know the conversions are there some of the units and conversion basic so we need to understand before going to into the design problem so the first one is the meter so the meter to mm conversion so here one meter is nothing but 1000 mm or it is also n raised to 3 mm we can say or 100 cm but in si system we are more frequently we are using the one meter is equal to 1000 mm similarly the basic unit for the force or load so usually it is indicated by the p capital p and in si system we are going to measure in the newton newton is the unit for the load or force so similarly what is the value of 1 kilo newton 1 kilo newton is what and similarly 1 mega newton is what so like that there are different 1 kilo newton 1 mega newton and 1 giga newton like that there are forces are there so okay so before going to this the value of 1 kilo newton so first of all we should understand so in uh, in the si number system and measurements already we know that there is a the, the numbers and measurement like the, that is deca hecto kilo mega giga tera beta and hexa so in that deca means 10 raised to 1 hecto means 10 raised to 2 kilo means 10 raised to 3 mega means 10 raised to 6 giga means 10 raised to 9 tera means 10 raised to 12 beta means 10 raised to 15 hexa means 10 raised to 18 so like that there is a increasing of the power of the 10 raised to 1 2 3 6 9 12 15 and 18 so similarly there is a decrease that is that is deci centi milli micro nano pico femto what to that is 10 raised to minus 1 10 raised to minus 2 10 raised to minus 3 10 raised to minus 6 milli mean 10 raised to minus 3 micro mean 10 raised to minus 6 nano mean 10 raised to minus 9 so like that nano pico 10 raised to minus 1 femto mean 10 raised to minus 15 auto mean 10 raised to minus 18 these you should remember the numbers and measurement the next one is the unit of area or cross sectional area usually you can indicate this cross sectional area by a letter a so in most of the cases we are going to write it as a a 
okay the area of a cross section so in case of this uh, in screw fasteners as i told the minimum requirement for the formation of the screw thread is the object should be cylindrical one means cylindrical when the cross section of the cylinder means a cylinder is cut in any portion if you cut the cross section that area how we are going to calculate so when it appears like a cylindrical that is circle so circle is having a what either it is having a diameter or radius half of the diameter we can call it as a radius and therefore the cross sectional area how we are going to calculate that is pi by 4 d square so that is d and if the you are the using the diameter pi by 4 d square we are going to write so either you can write the capital d for depending on the type of the notations used for the diameter in here in the case of nut and bolt we are using the dc for the core diameter and the d for the small d for the nominal diameter similarly the unit of stress so usually the unit of stress the stress is stress is nothing but it is force per unit cross sectional area or it is also called as the intensity of a internal resisting force of our weight so it is known as a stress similarly the tensile stress is nothing but the tensile loading because of the tensile loading the two forces which are try to move away from each other on either side say the tensile loading so means in the tensile loading what happens the cross sectional area is go on decreasing but whereas there is a increase in the the length so here the tensile stress is it usually it is indicated by sigma t and shear stress it is indicated by notation called tau and crushing stress it is indicated by sigma c and bending stress it is indicated by sigma subscript b so like that there are notations are there but the unit of the stress is force is measured in force or load is measured in what newton okay whereas the area area is measured in the mm square or meter square so like that so here force newton per mm square is the unit of the stress okay so next we will move on to the that the another very very important that is one pascal or simply a pascal what is the value of pascal pascal is nothing but it is one pascal is equal to 1 newton per meter square one newton per meter square is known as pascal but here we want in mm square therefore conversion of this one pascal into newton meter newton per mm square is very very important i told 1 newton per meter square is the one pascal so but we want in mm square therefore 1 meter is equal to 1000 mm so in that you know numerator 1 <coughs> newton is there in the denominator meter square is there 1 meter is equal to 1000 mm that is 10 raised to 3 so 1 divided by 10 raised to 3 square it that becomes 1 divided by 10 raised to 6 so means if you take this 10 raised to 6 in numerator so at that time it become 10 raised to minus 6 therefore 1 pascal is equal to 1 into 10 raised to minus 6 newton per mm square okay similarly 1 kilo pascal kilo means as i told 10 raised to 3 that is plus 3 the numerator is 10 raised to 1 into 10 raised to 3 divided by 10 raised to 6 is there 10 raised to 3 and out of 10 raised to 6 10 raised to 3 will go in the denominator there is remain of 10 raised to 3 so if it goes to the numerator so then at that time it becomes 1 into 10 raised to minus 3 newton per mm square similarly 1 mega pascal 1 mega means what already we have discussed here deca hecto kilo mega mega means 10 raised to 6 pascal means <coughs> 1 mega pascal that is 1 into 10 raised to 6 divided by 10 raised to 6 10 raised to 6 10 raised to 6 will cancel and there is a remain of 1 newton per mm square therefore 1 mega pascal is nothing but 1 newton per mm square so the intention of conversion in converting these units is very very important because while in the design problems so we are getting the the stresses and other thing they are giving in the form of the pascal only that is in mega pascal in most of the cases the stresses they are going to give in the mega pascal so here by this we can understand that 1 mega pascal is nothing but 1 newton per mm square let us move further so usually the tensile stress is denoted by the sigma t compressive stress is denoted by sigma c shear stress is denoted by tau 
and diameter is measured in mm next next is the very very important that is the torque or measured in watt so before the going to the measuring the torque so let us understand what is meant by torque so this torque is also called by name the twisting moment so means so whenever there is a the tangential force which will act the tangential force into the perpendicular distance the force into perpendicular distance that is known as the torque so let us you can take the a simple well known common example is there so let us so if you want to loosen or tighten the bolt nut and bolt so let us we can using the the spanners d spanners double ended spanners or open ended spanners we are using so we are uh, holding the the spanner to the head of the bolt and with the help of we are loosening or tightening so this the that is nothing but that we are applying the force certain with a distance force into we are applying the load with a some distance so that is we are applying the torque suppose if you are going to increase the distance the down the distance will increases the torque which is applied over the system will also go on increases that is so when you loosen or tighten so as per the required torque so it is very very important so this is simple definition that is force or load into perpendicular distance or it is also called as the radius or the diameter by 2 so this is at a distance means this distance is nothing but a radius or diameter by 2 like this we are going to calculate so this is one of the very very important the definition and parameter we should remember because in further uh, in the design problems we are going to use the basic definition based on that we are going to convert the the relations so this is important then how the torque is going to be measured so as i told as the definition torque is nothing but it is force into perpendicular distance the unit of force is what unit of force is newton and unit of the distance usually the distance we are going to measure in the meter okay so that is in so therefore the unit of the torque we are getting in the newton meter but in case of the design angle screw thread so if you want in newton mm so therefore meter to mm conversion we have already know therefore one newton meter which is equal to 1 into 10 raised to 3 newton per newton mm so this is the unit along with their conversions so and then next one is the the power transmitted so many is a rotating object or any speed any shaft you consider so there is a transmission of the power by the system so based on that okay so it is producing the certain amount of torque so that torque which is producing the the power power produced by the system okay so usually this power which are measured in the watt or kilowatt watt or kilowatt are the the measuring units of the power even the notations used for the power is also capital p so now here one of the very very important parameter you should remember the notation of the p is power here and it is the unit its unit is in watt or kilowatt and don't confuse with this capital p so in case of this uh, designing of a nut and bolt and in further section the capital p is the tensile load or shear load we are using p is same so in that the unit of the load is newton but here in this the unit of the power is in watt so we have to there is a difference we have to understand we have to differentiate when we say the power its unit should be in the watt or kilowatt when we say load or tensile load or shear load its unit is in newton or kilo newton mega newton like that so this is very very important parameter to be remember so next one is the basic definition of the pressure pressure is nothing but it is same that is the force per unit cross sectional area once again so its uh, unit is also same force is measured in newton cross sectional area is measured in mm square that is newton per mm square is there so there are some other units are also there pressure like bar pascal they are also we are using we should know conversion of the bar to pascal pascal to newton meter square already we discussed here okay so this is the once again the definition of the pressure is very very important in covering uh, in designing of a nut and bolt based on that is uh, on the type of like the cylinder type problems on that the gas pressure is given and cylinder diameter is given from that we are going to find out the 
the how much amount of gas load is produced by the system that is which is acting on the cylinder head so like that we are using the basic definition the pressure is equal to force or load divided by the cross sectional area so from that just we are rearranging the term for the force or load therefore we are getting the that is that uh, cross sectional area into the pressure that will give the the force or load is acting on the system okay so usually the pressure p is measured as usual told so that is measured in the newton meter square is pascal bar is there pascal is there newton meter square is there and newton per mm square is so let us these are the some of the units and conversions we have covered here so now we are let us moving on to the some of the some uh, problems so first one you can take down directly to solve the problem an i bolt is to be used for lifting the load of 60 kilo newton and the nominal diameter of the bolt if the tensile stress is not to exceed 100 mega pascal assume torus so you read out the problem and once again you write the given data so he has given an i bolt is used an i bolt means it is a single i bolt one i bolt is used for lifting a load of 60 kilo newton that is load is that is the tensile load he has given 60 kilo newton you convert the the load p p is equal to 60 kilo newton that is 60 into 10 raised to 3 newton yes given and the find the nominal diameter of the bolt we have to find out the small d which is equal to that is we have to find out the tensile stress is not to exceed 100 mega pascal sigma t he has given 100 mega pascal 100 mega pascal is nothing but 100 newton per mm square assume the torus So already here in the beginning only we have discussed that we know that when the bolts are subjected to the tensile loading, it is given by the equation P is equal to I by 4 dc square into sigma t. I by 4 dc square into sigma t. So now you substitute the value here. Put the value P is equal to 60 kilo newton. 60 into 10 raised to 3. Okay. I by 4 as it is, dc square is also as it is. Sigma t is given 100 mega pascal or 100 newton per mm square. Substitute the value and you rearranging the term for dc square. Therefore, dc square is equal to that is 60 into 10 raised to 3 into 4 divided by pi into sigma t. So after the calculation, so here how much you are getting? Calculate it. Do the calculation. So frequently you have to remember you have to use the the scientific calculator for solving this. So you calculate it four into sixty into one thousand or ten raised to three divided by divided by pi into hundred. How much you are getting? So after the simplification, so here dc square which is equal to 763.84 mm square. So but we don't want dc square, but we want dc. So just you to quote the square root of this. Therefore, the square root of square root of 763.84 is equal to. So therefore, you are getting. Twenty-seven point six. Twenty-seven point six. Therefore, but assuming the chorus thread, that is, DC is equal to zero point eight four D. Okay. Substitute the value and you rearrange in term for the nominal diameter D. Therefore, D is equal to DC divided by zero point eight four. Substitute the value. Twenty-seven point six. Twenty-seven point six divided by Divided by so here 27.6 divided by 0.84. So therefore you are getting 32.90. Put the value and calculate here. You are getting 32.85 or then it is nearly equal to 33 mm. Or from the machine design data book, you can open the table number 9. Okay, so in that, for the value of core dia twenty seven point six, twenty seven point six, we look at the table. So here the value we are getting that is m 
33 page number so from this so the nominal diameter of the board so we are getting from 33 so you can use so in this designing we are using both the method you can use any one method so let us move on to the another problem to take down another one an i board carries a tensile load of 20 kN 20 kN find the size of the board find the size of the board find the size of the board if the tensile stress is not to exceed 100 mega pascal and once again it is very simple similar to the last problem write down the data so an i board carries a tensile load of 20 kN that is load p tensile load p is 20 kN 20 into 10 to 3 is given find the nominal diameter small d is equal to how much sigma t is 100 mega pascal that is 100 newton per mm square so here already we know that assume the porous thread okay we know that now we know that when the bolts are subjected to tensile loading it is given by p is equal to pi by 4 dc square into sigma t now we substitute the value put the value 20 into 10 raised to 3 is equal to pi by 4 dc square as it is into sigma t is 100 newton per mm square therefore to rearrange the term for dc square dc square is equal to 4p divided by pi into sigma t put the value and find out so we substitute the value and find out 4 into 20 into 10 raised to 3 so find out the value First, find out to find the value. So after simplification, DC square nearly we are getting 254.61 mm square. So therefore, DC is equal to square root of this. Therefore, DC is equal to DC is equal to square root of 254.61. So here we are getting the value is 15.95 or 16 mm. DC is equal to 16 mm. Assuming the porous thread, DC is equal to 0.84 D. Therefore, D is equal to DC divided by 0.84. Therefore, D is equal to 19.04. D is equal to M20 or you can use the you know, from the design data book 9.15 standard table. So for the DC of 16 mm, the core diameter of 16 mm. So here we are getting the, the standard dimension as a M20 is the nominal diameter of the board. So this is another problem, very, very important. So we have to if you have any doubt, now you can. Otherwise, we will proceed further. We can take down another one. Determine safe tensile load for bolts of M20 and M36. Assume that bolts are not initially stressed and take safe tensile stress as 200 mega Pascal. So, you will the problem. Determine the safe tensile load for the M20 and M36. Assume that bolts are not initially stressed. Okay. Tensile stress is 200 mega Pascal. So, already in the previous session in theory, that is screw thread designation. Designation of screw threads is done by this. That is a letter M. Capital letter M is used to for the designating the, the screw faster. Means designating with a letter M followed by the number. So, means the M with letter number that indicates the, the nominal diameter of the board that is the small d. So this is further there is no separation further there are no numbers and separation values are not there that is it is understood that there is a the chorus threads are implied that is the threads are having the chorus in nature okay. Suppose there is another designation like we can give the letter M, the value is there, some value, number, and further there is a 
the into is there then followed by the number is there so means so there is a for example you can give m20 into 2 like that m20 into 2 is nothing but a, it is having a bolt is having a nominal diameter of 20 mm with a into is means for it is having a pitch value pitch of 2 mm so like that there is a separation if there is no into and the value other values are not there it is understood the core the pitches are chorus in nature so here the chorus pitches are there that is m20 and m36 two cases are here that is nominal diameter of the bolt is that is small d is equal to 20 mm and another one is this small d is equal to 36 mm here there are two cases are there so let us we will solve simple problem is there proceeding in the same manner so given that m20 is equal to d is equal to 20 mm m36 is nothing but a d is equal to 36 mm shear stress in the sensor stress is 200 mega pascal as yes. given so let us already we know that we already know that that is tensile load you have to find out for considering the case number one that is for m20 so for m20 assuming the chorus thread no so if there are no value means that is understood it is chorus thread dc is equal to 0.84 d substitute the value you are getting 16.8 mm as the the root of core dia so therefore otherwise you can directly use the design data book that is table number 9.15 so in that you can open the the m20 for the m20 series the root of core dia is 16.8 so here is already there so value are same so there you can use the this value or that the empirical relation value any one value you can use okay so therefore this is the value okay therefore we know that screw threads are subjected to the tensile loading so it is given by the equation p is equal to pi by 4 dc square into sigma t now you substitute the value p is equal to pi by 4 dc square dc square is value of put the value 16.8 square into 200 calculate it <coughs> simple calculations are there so simple calculation therefore we are getting 44,340 newton so this much amount of the tensile load is acting for the m20 bolt a bolt is which is under the tensile load of 44,340 otherwise if you want you can convert in the kilo newton that is 44. 34 kilo newton so this is the final answer for the m20 okay so now let us consider the second case for m36 proceed in the same manner dc is equal to 0.8684 dc is equal to 0.84 d assuming the porous thread find out the value so we are getting 30.24 or otherwise from the design data for m36 you can open the value so here also we are getting the same that is 30.39 30.39 mm is there so refer any one value so i will refer the value from the m relation so therefore we are once again we are proceeding in the same manner that is we already know that when the bolts are subjected to tensile loading it is given by the equation p is equal to pi by 4 dc square into sigma t substitute the value and we find out the find out this so here we are getting how much we are getting so therefore here we are getting 1 lakh 43361 newton or you can convert in the kilo newton that is 143.36 kilo newton so this is for the m another problem that is okay for this this is the this much amount of the tensile load is acting on the board so here we have in this session almost we have covered three important problems that is basic problem based on the tensile stress induced in the material of the board. Okay. Let us uh, proceed further. Further we are going to have, if you have any query questions regarding this, uh, these problems, can uh, ask now. Otherwise, uh, we will uh, proceed further. There are some homework problems are assigned for you. So, you take on the problem problem so determine a safe tensile load for a bolt of m48 and m62 assume that bolts are not initially stressed 
and take shape tensile stress as a 310 mega pascal so here uh, we will give the hint so the similar last problem whatever we have uh, solved no the same is there m48 is nothing but nominal diameter is 48 mm and for m62 nominal diameter is 62 mm the uh, tensile stress is 310 mega pascal is there directly you put the value in the convert the uh, Core, uh, core diameter DC is equal to 0.84 D or otherwise directly you can refer the design data book so in that so you can go for the uh, in the standard bolt uh, series the chorus thread bolt series there is available of data is up to M39 is there so for that better to use the empirical relation only okay you can solve so in the second one you can take an eye bolt is to be used for lifting a load of 50 kilo newton Find the nominal diameter of the board. If the tensile stress is not to exceed 70 mega Pascal, assume chorus X. So here the similar the first problem whatever you have done. So same problem is there. Only thing that the values are changing. So you can take the reference of that. He has given capital P tensile load is 50 kilo Newton. 15 to 10 raised to 3 Newton is there. Sigma T is also given. So solve in the same manner. Assuming the chorus X. Okay. You can consider the third one. An eye bolt carries a tensile load of 30 kilo newton. Find the size of the bolt if the stress is not to exceed 120 mega Pascal. Here also a tensile load is 30 kilo newton is given. Sigma T is also 120 MPa is given. It is though both the problems are nearly same steps are there. Okay. So these are the some of the homework examples or homework problem in the next session. So we want this uh, the solved with the, along with the answer we require from you. Okay. Let us we'll move on to the further that is the interaction that is the MCQ session. So whatever the portions here we have covered based on that some of the questions are there. Multiple choice questions. First one, which of the following stresses are induced in the board when it is subjected to an external? Option A is combined tension and shear. Option B is shear stress. Option C is tensile stress. Option D is all the above. So let us guess which is the correct answer for this question. So here, so correct answer for this question is the option D, that is all the above. So here in the beginning of this session, we are told that there are a number of stresses are induced in the holes. Which based on which type of stresses we are going to design the, the screw threads or nuts and bolts. So here the tensor stress we are considering, shear stress is also considering and combined tension as well as shear stress we are considering. So the fourth option is all the above stresses are we are going to consider for the designing of a nut and bolt or screw fastener. Second question, tensile stresses are induced in the bolt when it is subjected to an external load is in. So the when the tensile load, external load, it is in what unit? So here in SI system it is understood a is Newton, B is kg, C is Newton meter, D is the Newton mm. So here already we have in the introduction in the session, beginning of this section only we have told that there are some units and other uh, the conversions are also we have explained. The load or force which is in SI system it is measured or indicated or unit of the load is in what? It is in Newton. So the correct answer for this question is option A that is Newton. Because Newton per mm square is the unit of pressure is the stress is there. Kg is the weight load is there but it is not in. Okay. In SI system we are using the Newton. Okay. Newton meter is the unit of torque. Third one. Tensor stresses are induced in a bolt when it is subjected to a external load is given by the equation, the tensile load equation, which is the correct one here. We have to find out. Option A is equal to P is equal to pi by 4 dc square into sigma t into n. Option B is, that is D is equal to square root of 4 ps divided by pi into tau into n. And option C, ps is equal to pi by 4 d square into tau into n. And none of the above. Go through the session and whatever the problem you have solved on the tensile stress and tensile loading, you recall it. So the correct answer for this question is option A that is P is equal to pi by 4 dc square into sigma t into n. Okay. 
Next you take the last one that is design of a screw threads assuming the corus threads means that means the value of core diameter is option A capital D is equal to 0.5 into small d DC is equal to 0.84 D D is equal to 0.9 D and none of the above. So here already in the in this session we have solved so many number of problems on the, the assuming the corus thread that is empirical relation. So that that is in this the question that is correct answer for this question is DC is equal to 0.84 D that is option B. So here these are the some of the, the multiple choice questions are there related to this. Okay. So these are the some of the references recorded in this book, this uh, session, okay, for the extracting and content and uh, the some of the problems and along with that we are utilizing the design data for solving the problem. Okay. So these, these are the so thank you. So on behalf of all our group members, so we say thank for the the all the students who were participating in this session. Okay, once again. So on behalf of all our LMS group, so we say thank you. Thank you one and all.